Okay, how about some work with inverse functions? So remember that functions are just a relation, which means they're just a you know, set of ordered pairs, essentially. So let's suppose g, the function, is equal to the ordered pairs 1, 7, 4, 3, 5, negative 2, and 3, 6. So this means 1 is sent to 7, 4 is sent to 3, 5 is sent to negative 2, and 3 is sent to 6. I'm using red to mean input and green to mean output here. So the idea of an inverse function, which goes backwards from the original, is just saying that you're going from the green to the red instead of the red to the green. That's why we need inverse functions only exist when an original function is one to one. So what if a problem said find g inverse of three? Well, g inverse of three would be equal to, notice that three is not a red value. So I'm not going to say six. I'm not sticking three into g. I'm sticking three into g inverse. So I'm asking what red value gets sent to the green value of three? And notice that's right here, right? Four gets sent to the value of three. So the answer to g inverse of three is the number four. Okay, that's looking at it as a relation, but what if they actually gave you a function? Well, suppose h of x equals 2x minus 3. Well, not a function. These are all functions, but as a rule. If h of x equals 2x minus 3, using our typical function notation, this is similar to saying y equals 2x minus 3. So if we were to interchange and solve for the other variables, or the other variable, I guess, x in terms of y, let's try adding 3 to both sides to yield y plus 3 equals 2x. Then let's divide by 2 so that we can say that y plus 3 over 2 is equal to x. And then interchange the variables. So x plus 3 over 2 equals y. Because as an inverse function, that's really what you're doing. Inputs become outputs, output, outputs become inputs. So if a problem says to find h inverse of x, that's what we've done right here. This is the result that happens when you interchange x and y. So h inverse of x would be equal to x plus 3 over 2. Okay, now finally, as a note, h and h inverse, if h inverse is, exists, since it undoes exactly whatever h does, that means that if you ask h composed h inverse of any number, in particular a number like 5, the answer will simply be the number 5. We can verify that in this function up above. If we tried to figure out what is h inverse of 5, well, h inverse of 5 would be equal to 5 plus 3 over 2. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then, after doing that, take the result of 4 and stick it into the h function. So h of 4 would be 2 times 4 minus 3, in other words 8 minus 3, which is simply 5. So 5 went, let's say 5 went to 4, and then 4 goes right back to 5. So h of h inverse of 5 is the number 5.